Of all the railways of Great Britain, the Great Western Railway has always commanded the greatest loyalty and fanaticism among its followers. Railway enthusiasts have debated endlessly as to what was the best steam locomotive design of all. But to Great Western fans, the only locomotives that could possibly gain that accolade were the King's, the Great Western's ultimate express passenger locomotive design. Our story of Great Western Express locomotives starts with two of those that survive today. Firstly, a member of the Castle family, Clun Castle, coming off shed in the last days of steam to work a special rail tour and passing a hall awaiting works. She exhibits the final express passenger steam locomotive livery used by British Railways, lined Brunswick Green, as does number 7808 Cook and Manor, a member of the smallest class of Great Western 460s. She's also preserved by the Great Western Society at Didcot. The manors were produced in the 1930s primarily for working passenger trains over Great Western lines that had been built and were maintained to rather lighter standards than the principal main lines. This was both because the density of traffic was much lower and that they were built to lower specifications than main lines. Of course, these tended to be the further flung parts of the empire and it would have been uneconomic to upgrade them to the same extent as the main lines. So lighter weight locomotives were the obvious requirement. These rail tours in the mid-1960s echoed the great days of steam, the manors having been used on all parts of the Great Western system, both as train locomotives and as pilot engines, particularly fulfilling the latter function in South Devon, where a number of them were allocated to Plymouth and Newton Abbott specifically pilot expresses over the steeply graded line between the two towns. Perhaps the manor's best known work was on the lines of the former Cambrian railways, which were mainly single track, lightly laid lines radiating from Oswestry to the coast at Aberystwyth and Barmouth. They were associated with the Cambrian system's premier train, the Cambrian Coast Express, for many years, particularly in the 1950s. The most numerous class of Great Western 460s was the Hall class which was subdivided into 259 halls and 71 modified halls, the latter being an updated variation of the original design produced during the war. The halls were used for all types of traffic and were particularly associated with cross-country and inter-regional trains as well as holiday expresses. These engines are seen at Banbury, where many of those trains bound for the southern region via Reading and Basingstoke came onto the western from the great central main line via a joint line from Woodward Halls. The halls were the direct lineal descendants of the first modern express passenger locomotives of the Great Western Railway and perhaps in Great Britain. These were Church Ward Saint class, introduced in 1902 with a prototype 460 number 100. At this time, Great Western express locomotives were still of the somewhat archaic double frame type, which culminated in the city class, which post-dated number 100. This prototype was a radical departure from not only Great Western, but all British design practices, and was the product of the fertile mind of George Jackson Churchward. Churchward was a very able and innovative engineer who'd taken over the helm of Great Western locomotive affairs from William Dean in 1902, although he had, as assistant to Dean, effectively run them since the late 1890s. Although his entire career was devoted to the Great Western, Churchward was anything but insular, and he studied continental and American design practices with a view to their incorporation into his own schemes. After the myriad of small locomotives produced under Dean, which were classic Victorian designs, Churchward, released from the constraints of the broad gauge which had been abolished in 1892, was able to look forward to the 20th century and proposed a locomotive policy which would see only a limited number of classes of engines to cover all motive power requirements. <laughs> 
The standardization policy was based on the standardization of components, most notably in boiler design, these being switchable from one type of engine to another. Three wheel sizes were envisaged, six foot eight and a half inches for express locomotives, five foot eight inches for mixed traffic, and four foot seven and a half for freight. However, the scheme was not sacrosanct, and an intermediate size of six feet was considered for new construction by his successor, Charles Collard. The prototype for the new locomotives, which was to blossom into the Hall class, was one of Churchward's six foot eight and a half inch Saint class, which were the production versions of the original prototype number 100. The Halls became the archetypal Great Western locomotives, and the design was further updated after the war by Hawksworth, who produced the modified Halls, and a new class, the Counties, basically an enlarged hall with a new boiler, standard number 15, and six foot three inch driving wheels. For heavy express passenger duties, Churchward produced a four-cylindered version of the Saints using the same boiler. This was a celebrated star class, the prototype of which, number 40, appeared in 1906. It was built as a 442, or Atlantic, but subsequently rebuilt as a 460, and it was the progenitor of a separate dynasty of four-cylindered express passenger locomotives. The stars lasted well into the 1950s, and one load star is preserved as part of the National Railway Museum at York's collection. These scenes show the last of the class in action in the mid-1950s. In total, 73 stars were built, the last in 1923. The Princess Batch was the largest batch built in the summer of 1914, and Princess Margaret was withdrawn in 1957. Like the Saints, they had the largest wheel size, six foot eight and a half inches, and also like the Saints, the design was taken as the basis of a much more numerous design by Churchward's successor, Collin. The new design used the same chassis, but with a new boiler, the standard number eight, which was used only on this class, the celebrated castles. The only other visual difference was the side-windowed cab. Mechanically, the cylinder diameter was increased from 15 inches to 16 inches, but otherwise the engines were in large stars. Indeed, 15 stars were rebuilt into castles. Originally, it had been intended to fit the star chassis with the largest churchward standard boiler number seven, which had been used on his mixed traffic 280 or 4700s. This had been envisaged by Churchward, but the subsequent design was too heavy, resulting in the slightly smaller number eight design. Nevertheless, their axle loading was only just within the 20 ton limit, and they were the heaviest locomotives allowed on much of the Great Western system, and were coded red in the route restriction classification. Here we see a pair of them being used to test the strength of the seven bridge, which was normally out of bounds to them. The route classification system graded the various lines of the Great Western. The more important the route, the less restrictions being imposed upon it. Conversely, the heavier the locomotive, the greater the restrictions imposed upon it. The castles, stars, halls and counties were route restriction red, which referred to main lines, whilst the manors were blue, which included the secondary main lines. Branch lines were coated yellow, and only smaller locomotives were allowed on these. The route restriction was displayed on the cab side by means of a coloured circle. There were many variations amongst the 171 castles, most notably the height of the chimneys. The lower version of the famous copper-capped Great Western chimney became the standard. The front cover over the inside cylinders was squared off, and the final major modification was the fitment of double chimneys to 67 of the locomotives between 1956 and 1961. One of these, number 7029 Clun Castle, was destined to be the last of the class in service, being withdrawn in 1965. After working the last steam hauled passenger train out of Paddington in June of that year, or so it was thought at the time. Curiously, Clun Castle was never a Great Western engine, even though she was originally preserved in Great Western livery. Even more extraordinary is that she was put into traffic in May 1950 two months after the first of her class, number 4009 Shooting Star, by then renumbered and renamed 100A1 Lloyds, was withdrawn. Number 4009 was, of course, one of the rebuilt stars and had originally been built in 1907. Construction of the castles ran from 1923 to 1950, 
during which time many variations, all minor, contributed to the last engines being different in many respects to the first. Forty locomotives were produced between 1923 and 1927, and six towers were rebuilt to castles. Construction didn't restart until 1932, when ten more were added, sufficiently different to be known as the 5013 class. Production continued through the 1930s and included ten more star rebuilds. By 1939, there were 132 castles. The final 40 were built after the war and known as the 5098 class. It's curious that as many were built after the war as were built new before 1930. The final development of the Great Western four-cylindered express passenger locomotive type was the celebrated King class of 1927 of which 30 were built between then and 1930. The first locomotive of the class went to America in 1927 and acquired an American-style bell on its front buffer beam. The design was an enlargement of the castle with a bigger boiler, 6 foot 6 inch driving wheels and a strange semi-outside frame front bogey. But outside frames lead us back to the next part of the story. Quite a number of the Great Western's express locomotives survive today. Most notable is the celebrated record holder City of Truro, the first 100 mile an hour machine in the world. Naturally, such an historic machine is owned by the National Railway Museum, who've allowed it to work modern steam expresses in recent years. Here we see it on a British Rail intercity special from Didcot to Stratford upon Avon. <laughs> also been lent to preserved railways, and we see it next on an original Great Western main line, the Gloucestershire and Warwickshire Railway at Toddington. later she returned to the West Country to participate in the opening celebrations of the extended Dean Forest Railway at Lydney. The engine is an example of the express locomotives of the early part of the century, marking the end of the first phase of Great Western locomotive design and the start of the final phase. She has a modern taper boiler on an archaic double frame chassis. She was the 2000th locomotive to be built at Swindon, one of a class of 10 engines built in 1903, and a year later she achieved 102 miles an hour on Wellington Bank near Taunton. exposed cab of these early engines is clearly seen here. The only protection in bad weather was a canvas hood stretched between the cab roof and the tender. 
theme isn't just for the boys. Her mainline career for now ended in May 1992. record holder is the only survivor of the double-framed express locomotives. One other, a Duke Dog, mixed traffic locomotive is also preserved. They form an important living archive. The next series of locomotives gained their place in this program due to their association with the Cambrian Coast Express. The Great Western Manors were light 460s, specifically built to work over lightly laid lines such as the Cambrian lines from Shrewsbury. It was here that the Cambrian Coast Express was handed over from castle haulage to manor haulage, and this was reproduced in 1991, when one of the numerous preserved manors, 7819 Hinton Manor, relived those great days with the Cambrian Limited, a steam special from Shrewsbury to Barmouth. The Manors are effectively the smallest Great Western Express locomotives, being built in the 1930s and 50s to replace the old double-framed engines. Hinton Manor was the last of the pre-war engines, built in February 1939. The Cambrian Lions were their best-known haunts, but they were also used to pilot West Country Expresses on the steep banks in South Devon. Turn run, the manor displayed the Great Western's train describer head code. 
when not on the main lines, Hinton Manor can be found at home on the Severn Valley Railway. A number of the post-war manors are also preserved. Foxcote Manor appeared in December 1950, built by British Railways. She resides on the Llanglothen Railway alongside the River Dee. The engine is painted in British Railways Express passenger green livery. Last but one of the class, Odney Manor, works far from her original haunts on the East Lancashire Railway. This gives her plenty of opportunities to work hard. Perhaps the most versatile Great Western locomotives were the Hawks. Their express duties included through trains from the Great Central Railway via Banbury to the South and West Country, and it's on the preserved part of the Great Central that we see our first hall, Witherslack, of the modified hall class, which was a post-war improvement of the original hall class of 1924. The first locomotive of the class was a rebuild of Church War's first type of express passenger 460s of the Saint class. 6990 was built in April 1948 and is therefore a British Railways engine. 
Great Central is the longest preserved main line and is to reinstall double track, enabling a full express service to be recreated. In time, it will be an intercity line connecting the cities of Nottingham and Leicester. Nine months younger than Witherslack Hall is Burton Agnes Hall, which still works on the main lines. This is a Welsh Marchers Express, the Red Dragon. This engine normally resides at Didcot in Oxfordshire, but has a British Rail's mainline ticket, which allows it to be used on steam specials. Great Western engines were wider than those of other railways, so the lines on which they can work are restricted to ex-Great Western routes, with one or two exceptions. However, their native lines give them plenty of challenges. This is the same train returning from Shrewsbury. Halls were officially mixed traffic, but were to be seen on all kinds of work, especially on holiday expresses in the summer season. Home route from Didcot, Burton Agnes Hall leads the Cathedral's Express. <laughs> 
Great Western engines had a reputation for sure starting. Here's the proof. Purely for express passenger duties were the castles. Nunny Castle is a shed mate of Burton Agnes Hall at Didcot, but ran in on the Great Central Railway in 1990 before being released onto BR metals. Painted in the very last livery used for steam on BR, Unline Green, the castle is next seen on the part of the Great Central that will eventually be double track once again. The loan to the Great Central was in preparation for a test run on British Rail, on another part of the Great Central route from Sheffield. A loaded test run is one of the requirements made by British Rail before accepting a locomotive for working on modern steam specials. The test route via Sheffield from Derby is one of the few non-Great Western routes which can accommodate ex-Great Western engines. The test route is well chosen, with a severe bank at Woodhouse on one side of Sheffield and a one in a hundred bank immediately after the stop in the city. 
Dunny Castle was repainted in the full glory of the original Great Western lime green livery and has become one of the most popular rail tour engines. Here she heads through the Chilterns with a train from Paddington to Stratford-upon-Avon. Now the oldest working castle in Great Britain, Pendennis Castle works in Australia, Nunny Castle was built in 1934, 11 years after the first of the class was produced. Most of her work today takes her over the Great Western's old main line to Birmingham via Bicester. She's based at Didcot on the Oxford route. Although this is a train for Sheffield, most trains from London visit Stratford-upon-Avon, where engines have to run nearly into Birmingham to turn, giving the opportunity to see the rear of the engine and tender, as Nunny Castle returns to Shakespeare's birthplace. The classic Great Western tender holds 4,000 gallons of water. Great Central is the location of our next castle shot. Finished in a slightly different Great Western livery, Defiant is another British Rail approved machine. She spent a while on the Great Central for running in after an overhaul, as had Nunny Castle, and as would Clun Castle, as we will see later. <laughs> 
This engine has also worked on the other preserved main line, the Gloucestershire and Warwickshire. Here she recreated the route's famous named express, the Cornishman, which ran to the duchy from Birmingham via Stratford, Barmaiden and Cheltenham. The present GWR intends eventually to reach Cheltenham, but for now runs from Toddington in the Cotswolds to Gretton. Defiant's home is Tisley in Birmingham. Originally named Ogmore Castle, the engine received its present name in 1941 as part of a batch of engines renamed to commemorate Battle of Britain aircraft. She was built in 1939. The letter D on a red circle indicates that the castles were of power class D and had a root restriction of red, which effectively meant they could only work on principal main lines. The heaviest locomotives, the Kings, one of which can be seen here, were double red, confined to a very few routes. On this occasion, she was working on the part of the Cornishman's route that British Rail still operates. After Henley and Arden, there's a stiff climb up to Danzy and Wood End Tunnel. 
Birmingham Railway Museum at Tisley boasts a second restored castle, Clun Castle, which also had a main line certificate. Here she's working south on the main line from Birmingham to London. Clun is one of the final post-war batch of castles and was built in 1950. She received all the modifications made to a long-lived design, most notably a double chimney. She has recently become the third preserved castle to grace great central metals. Top of the heap were, of course, the aptly named kings. The prototype, 6,000 King George V, has enjoyed a long preserved career, but has recently retired once again, leaving the flag to be carried by number 6024, King Edward I. This was the Royal Venturer, a fitting name for a train headed by a king, which has travelled to places never previously visited by the toppling Great Western Express locomotives. However, most of its work, like the castles, has been over the old Great Western Birmingham main line. King at night can be awe-inspiring. But the true spiritual home of the Great Western is Paddington, Brunel's great vaulted cathedral of a terminus. 
for a brief period at the end of 1991 and the beginning of 1992, steam expresses returned to the capital, and Nunny Castle, City of Truro, and King Edward I recreated the great Western atmosphere once again. We conclude with the King backing down to take a Great Western Express westwards, as in days gone by. <laughs>